So once upon a time, not very long ago, many of us would have said that Apple doesn't listen to feedback from its consumer base and other critics. I mean, their computers remained very stagnant in many ways, with every yearly release until people started, started to take Windows laptops more seriously. People started to switch over to Windows, is what I mean, since we were still getting a fantastic build, a thin design, and our reports that we need. But while we still don't get USB-A ports or, or SD cards when it comes to our MacBooks, at the very least at this range, we do get fantastic performance and everything else that I talked about earlier. So this is the M2 MacBook Air. Is this the best Ultrabook of 2022? Well, let's dive right in. The exterior design consists of aluminum, and this is a very impressive build. This is also still a very thin and light device that feels really, really good. And when you get your hands on this laptop, it just feels incredibly premium. This is almost always the case with Apple products, but it really applies here with this one in particular. So there is almost zero flex to this device, and I am a huge fan of this build. On the right, you're going to get a headphone jack. On the left, you're going to get a MagSafe charging connector and two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which double as USB-C ports too. This device is extremely light when it comes to ports and that can't be denied, but I suppose that that's just the compromise that you are now going to make when you don't go with the Pro models instead. So this device features a 13.6 inch 2560 by 1664 16 by 10 liquid retina display that looks absolutely beautiful. This is probably the best display that I have seen on any laptop this year, at least when it comes to the Ultrabook market. This display is ideal for productivity, especially for color accurate work such as photo editing, drawing, and video editing. These are all tasks that this display will handle beautifully without a doubt, and I kind of feel like I would be wasting time talking about just how gorgeous the screen is any further. I think that this display is really tough to match when it comes to its sheer beauty. However, I still can't believe that this display is not touch enabled. I have found myself missing that aspect because every time I start working on a script and want to move on to a new column, or I should say a new paragraph, or just when I'm watching content on this display, I find myself tapping the screen to no avail. This is still missing, and at this stage, that's not okay. I would like to see touch support for this display in the future, but only God knows when that will happen, if at all. Now, the keyboard and trackpad combo on this device is hard to match. The keyboard itself is very good, and it's got a minimal amount of travel, but it's certainly great for typing for long periods of time. I think that many people will enjoy the keyboard for typing, and there isn't really too much more to say about that, considering that this is a great one. But I'm going to be in the minority here and say that I do miss the old super tactile switches that they had before that almost everyone else disliked. You really can't please everyone, I suppose, but this keyboard is perfectly fine. In fact, really good for all of your keyboard needs. Minus gaming, but you probably won't be doing much of that on this device anyway. So when it comes to the trackpad, I continue to be thoroughly impressed by what is offered here. It's a solid glass trackpad that feels really good to use. It still does not click without the electronic motors inside, but it is still fantastic. Gestures are also really nice to execute on this trackpad. I love this one without a doubt, and I think that in combination with the size, this is the best trackpad in the market right now. This device features what is still a pretty bad webcam. It's sported as being a 1080p webcam, but it looks pretty bad, as in it's barely functional. It's very noisy, even under ideal lighting conditions such as just being outdoors. For a laptop that is $1,200 at the base, this should not be the case. Granted, if you don't care about the quality, then the webcam is serviceable. Like, it's fine but it's not very good whatsoever. So this is one aspect where Apple continues to cheap out and I'm not a fan. So the speakers on this laptop are a little disappointing. So the speakers are actually located between the keyboard and the screen. So they fire towards the display and I don't like that. They sound pretty good, I guess, but it feels like they are a downgrade from the front firing speakers that we had before. They don't get too loud unfortunately, but we do still have some pretty good speakers nonetheless, really ignoring its positioning. So let's have a listen. And so welcome back to the Francisco Fair Vlogs channel. And uh, and today we're actually going to be doing a deck profile on what I've been playing for Yu-Gi-Oh! This is very uh, off kilter, but I really wanted to share my profile and what I like to play. Uh, so 
This device features an Apple M2 chip, which is an octa-core chip with a built-in GPU. So it's not dedicated, but it is integrated graphics. 8 gigabytes of RAM at the base, which is what I'm running on, and uh, 256 gigabytes of SSD storage and a 52.6 watt hour battery. Now I do wish that for this price, we still got 16 gigabytes of RAM, but unfortunately, we're just going to have to handle with the eight gigs and eight gigs is pretty all right. Let's talk about performance and video editing. And here I use DaVinci Resolve since I love the software and I don't own a copy of Final Cut Pro, but it doesn't matter too much because performance in the timeline is superb with 4K footage. I was able to edit a deck profile that I did recently on this MacBook and have zero complaints regarding the actual performance. I was editing very comfortably on this MacBook, same as I would on my iPad Pro, which only has the M1 chip, so that's worth noting. You should be able to edit quite a bit here if you want to, though render times will be pretty slow here. It took about 30 minutes to render this 22 minute video, and while that's not too alarming, alarming to people, I think it's still worth mentioning. Either way, I enjoyed editing on this machine as is. Now let's talk about gaming performance. So just because I really wanted to see if a MacBook is now a decent gaming machine, but the truth is that due to compatibility issues, this device is not suitable for gaming at all. I mean, from my entire Steam library, I could only download about three games to test, which are Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, Blade Symphony, and CSGO, all of which run okay at around 760p and low to medium settings. But I was surprised that Shadow of Mordor ran the way that it did because it was surprisingly playable. Just plug in a controller and you can actually get a little bit of gaming through here with this chip. Would love to test out the MacBook Pro as well in the future, so I will be on the lookout for that, but right now I still would not recommend a MacBook for gaming, because there's barely anything that you can play on this to begin with, but at least now you know how it would perform for gaming. So battery life with this device is truly incredible. Here we are looking at around 18 hours with really good standby power. So this is a really good device for taking on long commutes with you without a charger. So you can count on this one for sure. In conclusion, the M2 MacBook Air is probably the best Ultrabook that you can buy right now. The M2 chip is pretty insane when it comes to productivity, which is exactly what you should get a Mac for. Now, I still don't love Mac OS, so I definitely won't be keeping this device as I just don't enjoy using a Mac when it comes to the software end but when i can use the stuff that i use on windows this well with minimal to no drop in performance to get work done it's hard to argue with the results so yes i can strongly recommend this m2 macbook air and i really look forward to the macbook pro models adapting this new chip so that i can test them out myself but this laptop has too much going for it to not recommend to those who are mac users that is if you are a windows guy like me then this laptop just won't convert you Look at literally the rest of the market for a more solid alternative on the Windows front. But Mac users have their cake and they can eat it too. So thank you so much for watching this video all the way up until the very end. I do very much appreciate it. Uh, and now I am going to be leaving affiliate links down to Amazon uh, for this laptop. So if you aren't interested in getting this laptop and you use my link, I would appreciate that greatly because that's a pretty good kickback that would be coming back to my channel. And then I can reinvest that on more gear to review on this channel so that I can help you guys out in deciding whether or not to buy stuff. So I would very much appreciate that for sure. Uh, so please use that affiliate link and thank you so much if you do. Also, I would like to point out uh, that I do have the Tech Summit podcast that does post every episode. Well, like I post every episode every Friday. Um, so links to that down below. There are also going to be links to my blogging channel, which where I post just about everything that I want to talk about and things that interest me. So all of that down below as well. And I also like to stream on Twitch every Wednesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, but you will most likely catch me streaming earlier than that since I've been doing that a lot. And um, also, I do have an Instagram where you can follow me, so please make sure to follow me there too. So yeah, links to everything down below. But with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching, and until next time, enjoy.